Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. Rusty Erasmus versus World Rugby Round 2 has begun. Um, very, very interesting week and uh, a bit of a war of words happening at the moment between Rusty Erasmus and uh, Sir Bill Barmont, the outgoing uh, chairperson of World Rugby. Uh, after he made comments about the bomb squad and about substitutes and... Uh, very, very dangerous to be making comments in your personal capacity. So it's not officially a World Rugby statement, nor a World Rugby uh, official standpoint. But when the chairman of World Rugby makes these these sort of comments, for example, you know, it, it does come from a person who represents the organization. And it becomes very difficult to separate the views of the organization, the views of the individuals at all time, considering that he is so intrinsically linked in the current reshaping of the rugby landscape with the whole new laws, for example, that are coming in, the whole uh, drive to sort of uh, develop, supposedly, in better comments, the game and the way the game runs to try and make it um, better. Now, so Bill Bowman has come out and spoken about the worry um, about the bomb squad, for example, and Nassie Rasmus has responded to it at, at, as well. And uh, yeah, it's not a situation we want to be in, but this is 2024. This is how we do. This is how we see things happening. You know, we've now got head coaches on Twitter taking digs at uh, you know chairpersons of World Rugby, and it's all a bit messy, to be honest. But I think fair enough, and I think that this is a very worrying attitude to come from somebody right at the top. It doesn't get any higher than the chairman of World Rugby, and so for him to come out and uh, take, an, take aim at the bomb squad is very, very frustrating because, you know, there is this whole sort of rhetoric that, you know, World Rugby is against SA, um, Springboks, for example. A lot of Springbok fans feel that that is the way. I do think sometimes it gets quite far-fetched, but when things like this happen, you know, it doesn't do that uh, that concept and that uh, that that suspicion any good. You know, if, if, you, if you're asking that thing, oh, it just feels like World Rugby is kind of against us, and then the chairperson of World Rugby comes out and says, no, we don't like what you're doing, that's only going to build into the rhetoric that we are starting to see. And it has been very frustrating, you know, for example, the Dame Villainson law being um, banned and, and stuff like that. The water carrier, you know, being banned. You know, every single time Rusty Rasmus seems to do something, there seems to be something that comes in to, to sort of prevent him from doing that. And I, the truth, I think he does that pretty intentionally because he always looks at how he can toe the line with regards to what's allowed and what's not allowed. So he never, he's never any, done anything that he's not been allowed to do. It's just obviously then afterwards been uh, retrospectively so then sort of banned for, for moving forward. Um, so let's get into exactly what uh, Sir Bill Beaumont said, shall we? And uh, this is an article on Planet Rugby. And uh, uh, this is what he had to say. He was speaking to the Times and he said uh, that my view is that we allow too many substitutes. He says, I don't know if I'm looking through rose uh, colored spectacles, but in years gone by, the game always opened up in the last 20 minutes and games were often won in the last 20 minutes. Uh, he said, the bomb squad are very effective at what they do and very successful. They have won two World Cups. I will not criticize that at all because it, is, uh, because it suits their game. But maybe they could run for a bit longer and a bit further. So the main and the important thing is that my view is that we allow too many substitutes. And that in itself is, is fine as a statement. But then to go from that statement to then go directly to the bomb squad, it comes across as being an intentional dig on the bomb squad itself. Uh, which is worrying because you know you don't want to be sitting there in a situation where well why is the is the, the chairperson of world rugby criticizing you know something that the world champions do and you know that kind of again that you know there's this kind of implication as if they're potentially cheating or doing something wrong which they're not they're doing something within the laws of the game and it's frustrating that that is kind of then the attitude so rusty rasmus is not going to take his line down apparently and he posted this on twitter Oh, X rather, saying uh, obviously emoji bomb squad, and then that um, the good thing game is won or lost on the field and not in boredom. So you can see, obviously, very annoyed and very um, very vocal about the the, so, so the criticism or the comments made towards the bomb squad by Sir Bill Beaumont. And whether this is the right platform or not, I don't know. Um, you know, it's it's never ideal. But at the same time, you sit there saying, well, if he's going to go out and do interviews and put stuff into the into the public uh, media and stuff like that, then I'm also going to do it. I'm going to use my voice. So it's going to be an interesting... I, I, think, I think we're really in a very interesting time as, as rugby in the world, given the, the reforms, for example, and uh, what's going to happen with regards to a world rugby calendar, you know, talks about, you know, potentially the Middle East getting involved in new competitions, new funding for models, for example. So it's it's a very strange time for, for rugby. It's because it's... 
changing a lot and uh, where it's going to be finance is going to change rules are changing nations are that are, that are going to compete are changing you know there's been a big uh, call for better women's rugby structures for example potential overhaul of junior structures so it's a very um key time in rugby and that's exciting because i think it's going to change but the question the, the, and, the, and the main thing is we need to make sure it changes for the better and this is why these sort of conversations are, are not going to be uh, ignored because they need to be very clear that in terms of the new direction of rugby that we are all aligned and that it is for the good of the game and uh, I, I think that you know this whole obsession with the bomb squad is the reality is South Africa's got a generational talent in the forwards that they've got it's never happened before might not even ever happen again and we're already seeing that it's only when a certain players are fit you know it's not necessarily a case of you know spin can just uh, you know with by the bond squad, if you know, if they get twelve injuries, there's not this kind of incredible depth where we can tend to keep doing that. It's because the reality is it happened and it started because at one stage we had probably four of the best six blocks in the world, and you had Franco Mosses, Luis Diago, Arches Neymar, and Ivan Etzebeth, and you're sitting there going, "How do we leave any of these guys out?" Well, we don't. You know, we, we, we you, you, they, they sat and looked and said, "You know, we've got an incredible, you know, generational talent lock." I mean, all four of those players walk into any side in the world. They do. There's no, there's no side in the world that they wouldn't walk into. Uh, you know, maybe at the peak of the powers, they wouldn't walk into the New Zealand side when they had Radio Turk, Sam Whitelock at their best. But I don't think there's any other side in the world where they don't go in any of those, don't make a 23. And that's how the bomb squad starts. So that in itself, it's such a unique position. Now, uh, you know, the bomb squad wasn't working going into the other World Cup because Lourdes Diogo was injured until we got John Klain and he was in the form of his life and playing really good. So it's it's very player dependent. You know, yes, we have seen 6-2 splits, but other t- the other nations also do 6-2 splits, but it's not got that same effect because the, the caliber of player is not that high. So I think that's in a very important part. You know, do you really need to change laws and stuff because of a generation of players? And we don't necessarily have, I don't think we're going to have that kind of impact in five, 10 years time. I think we've got great players, but I think that, you know, we're not necessarily going to sit there with that's going to be our strength. You know, I think we've got amazing backline, new backline players coming in. You know, I could such find Miguel Mazzulu, for example, the way Apple the Fassi is playing. You know, if you start having generational, you know, backline players, you're going to sit there saying, well, how do we leave them out? How do we only have two backline players on the bench when we've got players who can, you know, create things and, and, and stuff like that? So it's a very interesting concept. But where do you stand? Let me know down in the comments below. Smash the like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. And uh, we'll monitor this and we'll keep you updated if there's any, any other war of words. But it's just an interesting thing on a Wednesday, isn't it? Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Smash the like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.